Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Charles Darwin once stated that the species with the greatest selective advantage in its ecosystem will survive among, above all others. The theory of natural selection, or survival of the fittest, is why we are here today, why we are at the top of the food chain, and why we have evolved into the intelligent race that we have, because of our design. We have naturally evolved to live while others die, so why play God? Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to reiterate, well, I'd like to say that we, while we are arguing with this motion that we are not talking about murdering animals, we are just talking about not going into habitats and preserving them against nature. Um, I'd like to take pandas as an example, if I, if I may. Um, pandas are not well designed. Um, they don't mate, and this is why they are endangered. <clears throat> so why preserve them? As insensitive as it may sound, they are not ecologically efficient. They will die out just like other species have died out in the past because they are not the fittest and they will not survive. They do not have a selective advantage in their ecosystem. If we were to hold on to sp um, particular species, we could be preventing other species from evolving. How are we to know that if we preserve a species that we are not stopping another species with a better selective advantage from living? Um, some argue for the pr preservation of species because we could be wiping out medicines. Ladies and gentlemen, we should be using the intelligence that we have naturally involved through natural selection to create medicines rather than searching through the jungle with the slight hope that we might find the cure for cancer. The money we spend looking for these plants or searching for these medicines could be directly used to fund the research for the, to find the cure for these diseases. Um, so what have I told you today? Charles Darwin was correct. We should, not play, we should let nature play its course. It's worked out well so far. Thank you. There are three main reasons for preservation according to experts, such as our speaker earlier. These come under the headings of ethical reasons, aesthetic reasons and utilitarian reasons. I would like to take this opportunity to break these down and show that they are not reasons for preservation. The ethical reasons are very subjective. I would like to ask well, not actually ask, but pose the question to you. Are you a vegetarian? Do you care about the animals in this ecosystem, this world that we've been given? I know there are vegetarians among us, and I would like to ask those who are not vegetarians, how can you consider arguing that we need to preserve species when you are killing animals for your own good? All these, the three reasons, aesthetic, utilitarian and ethical, all seem to provide humans with the trait of selfishness. The aesthetic reasons, well, we find nature beautiful and we preserve it for our own enjoyment. The, the very fact that we are doing this, as I've said, oh, sorry, as I've said, is selfish. Again, utilitarian, we are digging into animals' habitats, going in, it seems we are destroying them by merely trying to preserve them. This is selfish in itself. The fact that we are stating this is a utilitarian method is not true, as we are going in and we are taking things that these organisms rely on for our own good, and that is not preservation, ladies and gentlemen. By stepping in and preserving species, as my colleague said, we are trying to play God. We must not try to play God. We should try and play God's accountant. It costs $100 million dollars which is around 65 million pounds, to run preservation schemes for wildlife, namely pandas. There are less than 2,500 pandas left in this world. The fact that we are spending 65 million pounds per year on pandas is not financially feasible. So again, as insensitive as it may seem, pandas are neither ecologically or economically well designed. The amount being spent is just not justified. The utilitarian argument, again, does not hold up here. We gain nothing from the preservation of pandas. What have we ever gained from research into pandas? Nothing, except that they steal our bamboo for our furniture from Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> Similarly, but well, subjectively, pandas are not the most aesthetically pleasing of animals. I would also like to point out that we should not be focusing on one type of animal as we cannot only, well, we cannot save every animal and there's no point in investing so much in one animal. I'd just like to say it again that it's physically impossible to save every species on Earth. 
even though we may try, it's physically impossible. As Anne McGowan told us earlier, that how can we save something that we don't know exists? How do you suppose that we put in procedures to stop this animal becoming extinct if you don't know how it lives, if you don't know what it needs to survive? And who gets to choose what, does it, it, what, what, what we want to save and what dies? What gives you the right to choose what we save? What gives us the right to choose to spend millions of, do like millions of dollars and millions of pounds to save a panda that doesn't benefit us in the long run? You could save a few hundred pandas or you could save a few hundred species. It's up to you. The question was to preserve all species on Earth. The panda, the tiger, the stretch of caucus. Microbes are species too, so is it fair to keep the microbes that cause us harm or is it better to say that they're gone, to say that they're not there to cause us harm in the future? We must preserve ourselves before we can think about preserving others. Think of Japan at the moment. They're the ones that need our help. Selfish though it may be, but it's definitely necessary for the human race to keep on going as it's going. We want to grow in the future, we want to grow exponentially. So how can we do that if we don't look after ourselves first? Think of the Gaza Strip. The people are killing each other without any reason. They may think it is something big, but when you think about it, they're killing each other. When we're trying to save a panda, don't you think we should be saving other humans? To quote Chris Pacman, who else can see the con and conserve? We're conning ourselves into believing that we have the right to preserve other things, that we have the right to say what lives and what dies. We're not saying that we don't want to help everything, we're not saying that we want to kill everything, we're just saying that we do have to let nature take its course and we have to let the survival of the fittest go. We need to focus on the environment, we need to focus on the habitats as opposed to saving every single species. If we save a habitat, we could be saving hundreds. If we save a species, we're saving one. Preservation of all living species it could lead to the upset of food chains. Choosing to conserve specific species in excess will cause increased competition within ecosystems and cause unnecessary stress on trophic levels. This will effectively throw the biodiversity of that ecosystem out the window and therefore have repercussions for the planet as a whole. For example, in the recent hysteria surrounding Chris Packham, this suggestion was that we do not save pandas. This actually makes sense in that if we plowed money into saving pandas alone, the, bu the abundance of bamboo would decrease, therefore leaving invertebrates in the bamboo without the habitat. Therefore, due to the statistics and evidence found on thorough research, it can be seen that natural selection is the most plausible method of increasing biodiversity. After all, it is not only down to us humans to save the planet, we must help the environment to help itself.